It's not how much money you make but how much money you save. This for me is by far my most favorite quote. When we look at society today, there's just so much overspending that's happening that we don't take into consideration that we need to put money aside for the future. If your New Year's resolution is to start saving more money, this is the perfect video for you. We're gonna be discussing some tips and tricks that you can use to help set you off financial freedom but if this is your first time here my name is Nick welcome to ways to wealth before we get into the video huge favor huge ask if you learn some new or you get some value out of the video hit that like button for me I definitely appreciate that and if you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on we're gonna start off in this article that I found that kind of helps set the framework to help set you off to the best 2022 as possible. And what this article is titled is, it's not always how much money you earn, it's how you use it, which is a similar rendition as to what we discussed before. So what they're talking about that is, is they're basically saying if a high income really equates to wealth, how is it that professional athletes, actors, and here's to great fortune have managed to burn through millions put nothing aside for the future and end up impoverished. No matter how much money you earn, it can all disappear if you haven't used it wisely. So how can we use it wisely? Well, the first thing is that we really need to minimize spending and minimize debt. And the way that you would do this is that you would start with a budget. Now, there's many places that you can find a budget. I've done a video on this, like one of my earliest ones. So you can scroll back or I'll link it above. But basically what you want to do is you want to write down everything that is necessary. Rent, car payments, insurance, the stuff that you can't live without. That is what you're going to do. You're also going to be looking at what your after tax income is. So you're factoring in on one side how much money that's coming in. And then you're factoring in how much money is going out. So that's the first thing that, that we're really going to be covering because what you want to do is you want to figure out like what is the necessities then after you figure that out we're going to be moving on to the next step which is having an emergency fund and number two here is assuming that things will go wrong so there are certain occasions in life that do take a big chunk of change out of our wallet whether it's the heater a car accident etc cetera, etc cetera. a lot of you know financial smart people say three to six months worth of salary in an emergency fund. For me personally, I like to have a little bit more than that. I'd like to go a year just based on the necessities that I need, whether that's mortgage payments, insurance, car payment, etc. I want to have that ready to go just in case anything happens in my primary job. It gives me that sense of security, knowing that if the economy does go into a downturn, I know that's not for everybody. Start with three months, build it up to six, and then work for what you want to do there. The next portion is live below your means. So now that you kind of have your budget built in the first place, you know how much it costs you year over year to live. You know what that end of year cost is, and you know how much money is going to be left over. Now, what I say to this is that my personal model is that after I determine how much I make, how much is going out i want to pull a certain percentage or a dollar figure that i'm going to be saving every single month we can see here from a kevin o'leary article he says that the biggest uh money mistake that people do is they don't put money aside for investing he says the biggest mistake that people make today is that they don't put aside at least a hundred dollars a week towards retirement now he goes on to say that you know everybody can save a hundred dollars a week if you if you got a job and you're getting paid 30 40 or fifty thousand, if you're making that or even less don't spend it on something you don't need you know there, there's a lot of stuff out there that people go and buy that they don't really need he's saying that instead of spending it on that you should be spending it on, on investing so um, not only are we talking about putting this money into a savings account, we know with inflation that has been eating away at, at savings accounts, we should actually be look 
at investing a hundred dollars per week that is definitely um one of the things that i would suggest uh doing putting it into an etf that covers the whole market basis something that takes away the risk of owning just one stock but we'll go back to to the nitty-gritty and i think that's you know building out that budget determining a number that you want to save and invest for the future whether it goes to your emergency fund whether it goes to paying down debts whether it goes to investing there's there's multiple options and obviously based on your discretion and what you're dealing with in in your own personal financial situation so start with that and then once you determine that number you want to figure out what's left over this is where the netflix comes into play this is where um what what is called discretionary income you know what i mean stuff that can go to, uh, to out to dinner to eat this is the way that that i work it's definitely helped me to to build a base and and to make sure that you know i, I have this clear plan for the future and that's to build a good enough base that i can retire one day off of uh off of my dividend so um, you know, pay yourself first is definitely my plan. And, and that's basically what this budget is saying. Now, um, you know, you might be saying right now, I, I, I don't really have the, the, you know, ability to sit down like you and, and kind of do this, uh, do this plan of not saving. If it's in my bank account, I'm going to spend it. Well, one of my suggestions in, in that term is I definitely have that as well. And one of the plans that I've implemented is having two separate bank accounts. So I have my everyday uh, bills going in and out of paycheck going in and out of. And when I've determined what my pay yourself first number is, I actually pull that out to a second bank account where I keep my emergency fund. So you can look at if you're in Canada, like a Simply or a EQ bank, something that pays over a 1% interest rate in a, in a savings account and that will kind of eliminate the need or, or the kind of access to the funds you want to make that as inaccessible as possible is basically what i'm saying another thing that you can do is you know in the old days you know people used to have jars and they used to put money into jars and now with accounts at certain banks we that they've developed certain strategies where you can create separate accounts in there, whether it's, you know, the vacation fund or the emergency fund. And we can see here uh, that Scotiabank a couple years ago developed something called the Momentum Plus. And what it does is it allows users to channel their savings into five different buckets, which they can label based on their goals. So like we discussed, you can have one for whatever that may be. And it just allows you to give you an understanding of planning things out. Hey, I want to I want to go on a vacation next year. I'm going to need $2000 and I'm going to need to put X amount in every week or X amount in every month in order to save up for that goal. Um, you know, emergency fund, I want to have X amount in there. This is how much per per month I'm going to need to put in there. And then, you know, it just allows you the visibility to see what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis and kind of help plan things out in advance. So those are definitely, you know, some of my tips is to develop a plan going into the year. Know what's coming in, know what's going out, determining how much of, of that leftover piece is going to go to emergency, um, you know, investing, and then, you know, discretionary income. And then from there, you'll kind of be able to uh, use certain tricks and, and tips um, to develop like where, you know, the end of the year, you'll have more money aside and you'll be better off than you are today. And, and that was kind of the whole point of the video. And if you're still here with me, I definitely appreciate you. If you learn something new, definitely hit that like button. I hope you all have a great week in the markets. Have a, a great new year. Take care.